Let me tell you a few things about Claire Murray. She's young, just 25 years old. She's mum to two little kids. And she's critically ill with liver failure. She sounds like the perfect candidate for a transplant, right? Well, no. There's one more thing you need to know about Claire Murray. She's a drug addict. And when she received her first liver a few months ago, she didn't cherish her gift. She squandered it, slipping back into the drug habit that caused her illness in the first place. So here's the dilemma. Do we let Claire die or do we give her another chance? And who should foot the bill if we do? Send away the door. Sorry. Excuse me, please. Thank you. OK. Good afternoon to you on Mad as Hell Monday. A lot more people deserving than her in this world. I can tell you that those seven people who've done nothing wrong, you know. Claire Murray's story begins here in Perth. Five months ago, her liver began packing up and only days from death, she was one of the lucky ones, chosen from the waiting list to receive the ultimate gift. But only weeks later, she made a dreadful mistake by going back to using heroin. The donated liver began to crash and Claire found herself back at this hospital. Her family begged for her to be put back on the waiting list. She reverts again to drugs. So what are the other people waiting for liver transplants going to think about it? Public opinion in Perth has been overwhelming. I can't believe they expect the taxpayers to become a tab. With such a shortage of donor organs available, how was it that such a precious gift of life could be wasted on a drug addict? I wish that the girl and her family all the best, and, but um, in principle, no, I don't think she deserves that chance. Claire's mum, Val, was listening to it all, pleading for understanding. Uh, I was just, like, in despair. I prayed a lot. But um, we're a strong family. We all stick together. And there's a lot of negative people out there ready to persecute you when you're down. I say to those people, if you've never done any wrong and you've lived like a saint, go for it. But your day will come. Given Claire's drug background, she was lucky to get a liver in the first place. Despite a strict Catholic school upbringing, she became hopelessly hooked on heroin as a teenager. Her family blamed the medication she was prescribed for ADHD when she was 12. Her addiction has gone on for nine years. When did you last use heroin? Today's Thursday. It's been two months, one week and four days. You think about it that precisely? Yep. After the first transplant, it only took a matter of months for her to return to drugs. Her new liver failed, and this time, the medical team couldn't help. For Claire's doctors, there was no choice. The decision was made for them, thanks to national guidelines that govern organ transplants. The rules say if you're a persistent substance abuser, you don't get a second chance. For Claire, that meant the waiting list was well and truly off limits. I accepted that. 
and I was prepared for that. When she had her first transplant, we didn't in our wildest dreams think that she would ever reuse. But we're not medical people and we didn't know at the time. We've since been told by a doctor that she had 97% chance of going back to use. We weren't told that in the beginning and we didn't know that. But now that we're aware that that could happen, we're behind her 200%. I wasn't even aware that somebody with a, uh, an addiction issue was eligible for a transplant in the first place. So it's very sad that she couldn't look after it for whatever reason. Jane Myers has followed this debate with a mixture of confusion and anger. Her eight-year-old son, Anthony, had a liver transplant five years ago, but it's failing. And the wait for a second is agonising. It's a precious gift, isn't it? It is, absolutely. It's, it's the best gift anyone, anyone can give another human being. And to not look after it and respect that, very hard, very hard. There's so many people out there that do do the right thing, um, keep themselves healthy, watch what they eat. They value that gift that they've got. Tell me what it's like to wake up every day just waiting. I try not to think about it too much. Sorry. You can't, you can't think about it. It would swallow me up and I wouldn't be able to function. I just get on and live life, life as normally as possible. But while others wait in desperation, Claire Murray's family went straight to the top. They pleaded with WA's Health Minister, Dr Kim Hames. And in the face of public outrage, he agreed to an unprecedented government loan to fund a transplant in Singapore. Why did you decide to arrange that interest-free loan of $250,000? Well, I, I had a great deal of sympathy for the family, a mother with two children, and you know, frankly, when you're a minister, you don't get the chance that you're the one person making a single decision that's going to save somebody's life, and you know, I wasn't going to blow it. Conversely, uh, you didn't want to have her blood on your hands. Well, I never thought of having her blood on my hands. Even when we were copying a lot of public criticism for it, I have to say I wasn't concerned, because when you make a decision that you think is the right one, you feel good about it, and it's pretty hard for people to turn you off. With no time to waste, Claire's family packed their bags and the hundreds of tablets to keep her alive until the operation. Have they told you how long your current liver would last? Um, well, they gave me three to six months in January and we're now in March, so I'd probably have another three months to go. This time, Claire's mum, Val, will put her own life on the line. It's what's called a live transplant and it's dangerous. Oh, is that all you need? No, you need to... The chance of there being a problem for you on the operating table, have you contemplated that at all? Yes, I have. There's no other choice, really. I love Claire. I love all my children and I'd do anything Sorry. Oh, it's all right. It's, it's, it's a wonderful thing you're doing. Any mother would do it for her child. And I just hope it works out OK. And she gets to prove all these people wrong, that she is a good person. She comes from a good, loving home. And she's got a lot of love in her. It is a very close family. Val's sister Carolyn is going to Singapore as well as a standby donor. The surgeon here needs a backup organ in case of a crisis on the operating table. Are you certain that you won't go back on the needle after this? Definitely. It's just not worth it anymore and putting my family and my kids through it isn't worth it anymore. And I don't 
want to live that lifestyle anymore. You can't possibly contemplate destroying another liver, can you? No. The plan is to remove a large slice of Val's liver and give it to Claire. Over time, the organ will grow to normal size. The liver is the one human organ that regenerates. A deep breath in, let me know this so, eh? But after a week of exhaustive tests, with the deadline looming, surgeon Dr. Prema Raj called in Val and Artie Carolyn and delivered a bombshell. You know, we, we, we've gone through the whole, all the tests, yep. I mean, uh, anatomically uh, and uh, physiologically and all that, both of you are suitable donors, but the better donor we feel would be Caroline, okay? For Claire, the real challenge comes later. Beating her addiction and staying healthy for the sake of her kids and the devoted family that's making it possible. We'll do our best. I know you yeah. will. I know you will. You've all been absolutely wonderful, wonderful people. And you're still on standby. Good. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. I'm ready right up to the last minute yeah. if anything changes. So, good luck with it all. Thank you. Just in case um, I don't come through, I'd just like to thank all my family and the Australian government and even to the people that are negative to this cause. I'd like to say um, I'm sorry and I just hope um, addicts and people who donate organs can learn through this and see how valuable life really is and not to mistreat it. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our extra minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.